Hey, hey there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to the Red Pill Religion podcast. Red Pill Religion, where amongst the things we say is that belief in the supernatural and the transcendent is normal, rational, healthy, and evidence-based. So if you like the kind of work we do here, please support our work on redpillreligion.com, where in these days of social media censorship, you should always find us. Um, please do hit the PayPal hit, uh, tip jar. Please do find us on Subscribestar, on Patreon. Still, yes, on Patreon. We keep hoping they're going to change over there. We're not sure, though. They recently suspended our payments again. We'll see what's going on with that. Um, it's time to move on. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, please also, we, we've got, we're getting some initial orders from the, for our shirts and mugs and stuff, which you'll also find on redpillreligion.com. So uh, early, early reviews are favorable. So let us know how, you're, uh, how you like that. Uh, just so you know, tomorrow night we're going to have the the uh, controversial E. Michael Jones on, and we're going to be talking about his theories regarding the Jewish religion as well as the atheist and the LGBT uh, agendas. Uh, so we'll be talking about that. Wednesday we're going to have uh, Mary's Advocate, by McFarlane of Mary's Advocates on here to talk about the travesty of no-fault divorce and why no-fault divorce is actually an probably a, a violation of people's rights and is really just a, a way of letting people universally abrogate a, a contract. So that's going to be interesting. We're here every night. But now tonight, as usual on Monday nights, we have science fiction writer and raconteur and uh, uh, general good guy, uh, John C. Wright. Say hello to everybody, John C. Wright. Hello, hello. It's uh, nice to be here again. Thank you for having me. Everybody be sure to visit John C. Wright uh, on scifiright.com. Click on the works link and buy all of his books. I have it on good authority. If you buy all of his books tonight, he will write you a sonnet. Um, but no, seriously. He's, uh, no, I, I will write you a science fiction short story. There you go. I'm not good as a sonneteer, but as a science fiction story writer, I'm aces. You know, Fair I'm enough. Aces. And I see, let's see, what is going on on the scifiright.com blog? Well, amongst other things... I see that the great Gene Wolfe has passed. I'm very sorry to hear that. It is uh, a sad day. It is a sad day. And he, he's one of the best and most respected science fiction writers of the last couple of generations. Though he hasn't gotten his due in the last few years, in the last few couple decades, I don't think. Yep, yep. Um, well, he died, he died Catholic, didn't he? Yes, yes, he was Catholic, lifelong Catholic. Well, then we'll definitely say a prayer for him and look forward to seeing him in heaven. Um, uh, That's my one with saying it, but I went to Mass with him once. Did you? That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, uh, oh, you've got something going on. Huh? Man, man, he was wearing a big T-shirt that had a giant face of a wolf on it, if you get the pun. <laughs> uh Okay. And is Lost on the Last Continent? Oh, you're going to have that up in the next couple of days, right? Negative. It, it it drops on Wednesday, and whenever we used to, uh, whenever our, our broadcast used to go on Wednesday, it would be the top item at all times. But right now, it, my last one was uh, my last one was posted uh, uh, on the uh, on the tenth. Right, and so you'll have another one in a couple of days, right? Yes, correct. Excellent. All right, we're probably going to go back to Wednesdays in the next month or so. Now that my once my kid's done with this semester of school, but in any case, all right, Mr. Wright, what are we going to talk about tonight? We are going to talk about uh, first what? off. Here's one of the uh, censorship and Christians. And before I begin, I want to note something. He said it, it quickly. Is apparently, I heard you. I'm he sorry. Really quickly. I don't think anyone heard you. You said it really quickly. We're talking about censorship and Christians. Censorship and Christians, and I want to start with something that is absolutely not true. Um, I have been, I am sick of hearing this at this point. Um, uh, uh, within the video game community, within the nerd community, within the young nerd community, and by young, I'm guessing under 35, um, uh, it is widely believed that throughout like the 80s and 90s, uh, especially, that there was a crushing, crushing uh, censorship of video games and music and movies, and especially their precious video games and comics, by Christians. And this is it, it's <laughs> the United States. And this, what? I hear it all the time now. And I'm like, dude, I was there. The, Did they have they know no one who was alive during the 80s? Yeah. It was some ineffectual complaining 
by the moral majority, and they attempted one or two desultory boycotts that had almost no effect, and and as far as by and large, they were simply ignored. Now, if you want to talk about the 40s and 50s, there was sufficient public pressure in the what? 30s for Hollywood to adopt the Hayes Code, and there was pressure on the uh, uh, comic book industry, thanks to I can't remember his name. He was Werther. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and when I was young, I thought Werther was a villain, and now that I'm older, I realize that he was certainly right about Wonder Woman, and uh, uh, that Charles Fulton was was warped. I'm sorry, he was not not a mentally healthy man. Uh, so he might have been right about more than that. We did and, have. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, in the comics, I thought uh, prospered in those years. I, I don't. Uh, I think the censorship, if it did anything, made them uh, made them better. Oh, no, I'm not on your side there. I'm not on your side there. No, well, I think the case of Wortham was overstated um, uh, because mo a lot of what he... Uh, you know, I, the comics in the 60s are, are the classics? The, co the, the, comics co the Comics Code Authority did, in fact, destroy a number of independent publishers. It made it really hard for independent publishers to be out there. Um, because you couldn't get onto the magazine, you know, the oh, dime store oh, racks oh, and stuff like that without that symbol on it, and it was run by industry groups, and so uh, you know there there was widespread pushback against the Comics Code Authority in the '80s because of that, and independent comics got more popular after the Comics Code Authority I, I, went I will, away. I will concede the point that there was that there was a a chilling effect on the independents. I, I I will yield the argument to you, but I will still say that the the comics that were done in those days. Special things like Steve Ditko's Spider-Man were were the classics of the genre. Were, were oh, yeah. Uh, the the original the ori there was some fabulous work done in comics in the fifties and sixties, without doubt. I do think that the industry got you know the art form got pigeonholed as for kids only because of that Comics Code Authority. But I think there was the usual corruption between government and big business going on there too. You know, the people who signed on for the Comics Code Authority did in part do that so that they could squeeze out their competitors. Um, but, you know, that's still, that's all going back to the 50s and 60s. By the 80s, you had a, you had a revolt against that stuff. Yep. You had movies getting more and more and more daring and provocative. There was a campaign for a little while there of, who was that video? There was a video game guy, a Christian video game guy, who said video games cause violence and we got to crack down on them. Um, I can't remember his name. Everybody, all the young video game characters know him as a villain now but even that or or tipper gore and her parents music resource center these were efforts to get labels put on things say hey this has a lot of sex and violence in it and maybe kids shouldn't buy it that's all it was that is as far as the censorship has ever gone in my life um yeah. christians wanted warning stickers and i could even make a case that warning stickers aren't that great an idea you know uh but you know that was it. That was the only censorship that was. That was the rotten censorship everybody's talking about. BS. So that's my rant. Um, young people, really, you've been fed a message that like the 90s were a sort of Stalinist gulag where you just couldn't get comic books with big chested girls in them. And I'm sorry, but you could. You can't get those comics these days. And that's because of the left, not because of the right. Yeah, pre pretty much they're exactly. All, they're, all drawn, they're all drawn like, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, the whole idea of free speech and free expression came up out of Christian values. I'm sorry, but it did. And, 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 a, and a Christian ethic, um, and frankly, a Protestant ethic, uh, to give them credit or, or, or not. Um, you know, you can believe whatever you want. You get to say whatever you want without penalty. But that's, that's ultimately a Christian ethic. Um, we don't, and, and, and as soon as we threw the Christians out, the free speech, have you noticed that the entire idea of free speech is just evaporating by yeah. the day? The, the, the youth seem to have no idea of why it should exist. They don't, they don't, they, they substitute, they equate in their minds free speech with freedom to do and to encourage violence. And so by the same logic that allows a man to uh, attack an attacker or kill a killer in self-defense. If your free speech says something that they find uh, uh, offensive or uh, illegitimate, then they are free to put on a, an Antifa mask and assault you in public. 
the uh, the political commentator Michael Knowles was assaulted uh, at a uh, on a lecture podium uh, just this week at a, at a college where he had been invited to give a lecture. The title of the lecture was "Men Are Not Women," and the newspapers reported him as having lectured on anti uh, trans uh, uh, propaganda or something like that. They just said it was it was crime think. So. My question for the audience is, outside of the Christian value that says, A, each man has free will, B, he must come to God freely or not at all, and C, he has an innate dignity that he gets from the Creator, why in the world would anyone not believe the Thomas Hobbesian argument that free speech leads to tumult and confusion, it uh, causes mo riots and mobs, it allows people to conspire against the government. It allows people to criticize their leaders. Uh, it uh, causes confusion and, and, and discontent, and therefore the state of necessity must uh, use its every power to suppress any speech that is not pleasing to the to the leaders, because the leaders are our, you know our father and our mother. Is there, is there any is there any uh, secular logic? If, if you think there's no law higher than a human law. Why should the human laws be constrained? What what what, what limit is there on what, what 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 logical argument can you give that says a law uh, deterring free speech is illegitimate? Illegitimate yeah. how? By what standard? What yeah? What's, what's your reason? secular reasoning? What's your atheist reasoning yeah. that, that everybody should have free speech? Why? What's your reason? Right. Right. Uh, I, I I actually think this relates. I meant to mention this. You know, prayers for Notre Dame and the people there. Um, I actually do think this relates because literally Europe, as Europe dechristianizes human rights, including basic human rights of assembly and, and press and speech, um, I, I don't know, you could argue whether those, uh, but they're, they're dying. Everything about, we were told, we were sold this message, I think, starting the, in the early 2000s that secular governments had just proven that they're less violent, more tolerant, more educated, more, more, more advanced, more diverse, uh, uh, and, and it's all lies. It, it, they were running on the fumes of, of a cultural heritage they threw away, and they said, we have no need for God, we have no need, we're going to reinvent the world in our, our fashion. Yeah. And and they emptied the the churches and they, they they attacked the churches and now they're burning the churches and uh, I even still see I see people online laughing at this um, oh, and yeah. think it's a great thing and I'm like okay great so we went from freedom of religion and freedom of speech to laughing as the as things like this happen it, the 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 laughter is laughter of barbarians I remember when the when the uh... When the jihadists blew up the ancient carved stone Buddhas in Afghanistan, and every Christian I knew was outraged, even though none of them believed Buddha to be divine, mm -hmm. we, regard, we regarded him as a, a, a as a you know as, as a heathen, as someone who you know has not been exposed to the light of God. Even though, like most Christians, we think there's some good in uh, there's some good in every religion, though it's not you know it's not the whole truth, and therefore it's it's it, it's, it's it's deceptive. But none of them were cheering at the destruction of the ancient things. You and occasionally I, hear uh, historically illiterate people talking about how the Christians ruined and butchered the cathedrals and burnt the books of the ancient world. That's not true. The people in the ancient world were the Christians. They, they were the pagans who just adopted Christianity. And it didn't suddenly make them no longer respect and revere Aristotle and Socrates. Throughout the entire Middle Ages, the, the, all that ancient lore and learning was preserved by monks in, in Scriptoria in the West. Yep, your, your whole idea of preserving other cultures comes from the Christians, who did a very good job of helping preserve other cultures. I'll show you something else that's going on. I mean, I know it seems like a change of subject, but it's not. This is a great article or, or video done by Devin Stack, who I've become more and more of a fan of. He needs to learn a little bit more, more about Catholicism, but that's okay. Other than that, he, he makes a lot of good points. Uh, he, he does these reviews and talks about what Hollywood is up to. Have you heard about this new show called The Good Fight? I only know of it from this article, which you brought to my attention. Oh, did I send that to you? Oh, okay. Uh, you did, and it is scary. Tell the, tell the uh, listeners about it. Well, The Good Fight is a new uh, television se series on, uh, I, I forget who's putting it out, 
Um, and it's more fairly typical secular social justice stuff, right? Feminist, evil white people, racism everywhere, blah, blah, blah. But they are very open about the fact that some people and some ideas should just not be allowed and not be given any tolerance. And that it is, in fact, okay to punch people for saying things that you don't agree with. Um, and that, that it's totally okay to assault them, in fact. And of course, predictably, all the violent people are right wing. There's a reference to something called the red vests, which is, you know, obviously an allusion to the yellow vests, although actually a lot of the yellow vesters are left wing. Um, uh, self, so, so, so self declare, you know. Some of them are even communists, where other, you know, but whatever. Um, and some of them aren't. I'm not attacking the yellow vests, they're just all over the place. But in any case, everything's about Republicans, Nazis, evil white men, evil white men, evil white men. And the ultimate message is it's okay to shut them up. In fact, they go. the, the heroes of the story spend considerable time uh, talking to each other and justifying, basically destroying the man because they don't like what he has to say and what he believes. Uh, you know, destroy, you know, let's see if we can get him fired from his job, uh, you know, uh, leave him without any financial means just destroy him and this is all viewed as a good thing to do the titular subject is a man who looks just like richard spencer the the neo-nazi but the message couldn't be more clear they are normalizing shutting people up and even hurting them destroy hurting them physically or or destroying their lives their their ability to make a living or anything like that because they don't like what they're saying and they're making that heroic. And they're making it like anybody who opposes them is a secret Nazi and is secretly very dangerous. And it's just blatant how we have, John and I are both of an age. I know we're, we're starting to sound like cranky old men and talking about the good old days, but oh, no, I'm, this is shocking. I'm, I'm of an age where I remember the, the- I sound like a cranky old man since I was a teenager. So that's not changed, but we're not old enough to remember the times that to your younger listeners are just mythical. The 80s as the time of Stalinist repression, are you are they out of their minds? It's within the rudimentary. How do they think they can get away with a lie about, of such magnitude? No, but, well, you know, it's, it's right out of Orwell, yeah, yeah. man. If you can rewrite people's history, you can control them. If you make sure people are not curious, and if you make sure their egos are caught up in the narrative, if the narrative is mother and father to them, if the narrative is comforter and savior to them, they will feel loyalty to it, whether it's true or not. They won't care about it. They'll it have blind faith. Be, it. it used to be just common, everyday, ordinary American value, and not to mention a fundamental Christian value is that you don't hit people because you don't agree with what they say. You, that free speech, absolutely, you know, if we want free speech for ourselves, we want to have it for others. Everybody understood this. Um, it would be shocking that you would just uh, hurt somebody um, or try to destroy them because they had an opinion you didn't like. And this is now being normalized as positive, normal, be as, as not just normal to, to do that, but to, like, like uh, admirable heroic. somehow. Heroic. heroic. That's what I was looking for. It's heroic. If you, if you trample on someone else's First Amendment rights, if you deny him, because the difference is that among civilized men, the, among people informed by the Christian religion, they regard all other men as their brothers because we're all children of the same God. Civilized men regard all men as being under the same law, and the law is, and, and we're ruled by laws, not by men. And the law regards all men's rights as equal. A rich man has just as much right to his mansion as the poor man has to his hovel. Okay? They, they don't have equal income, but they have equal rights. Yeah. Okay? In order to destroy that concept, what the left has done deliberately, thoroughly, carefully, over the last hundred years, is destroyed the concept of equality so that it now means equal goods, equal honors, equal uh, uh, equal access to the megaphone. So it's basically a meaningless concept now. Uh, it, no, excuse me. It actually is a concept that means the opposite of what it used to mean. It means that the the pauper has an equal right to the mansion of the rich man, but the rich man has no rights. Equality now means not having rights as opposed to having rights. And they also said there's no such thing as truth. There's no such thing as, as, as an objective reality that we can both refer to as the arbiter of disputes. If there's no objective truth, 
if there's no reality to point to, if there's no known reality, then the only thing that is left to, to handle disputes is power, violence. When you listen to the leftists, they always talk about power. They talk about the relationship between men and women as if it's a power relationship. Yeah. You know? Everything is down to a power relationship. It's a rather complicated relationship in America. as a power relationship, as if there's no other factor, there's no other dimension to any of the relationships there. Okay? Yeah. And, so, and so they then say, if there's no truth, then there's no reasoning with people. So for the first time in civilized society, anyone who disagrees with the left is regarded as being uh, merely subhuman, not worthy of answering. You just you just clock them with your fist because they're they're automatically bad things. They're automatically anathema. They're automatically heretical. I uh, my only pushback with you is, and it's my usual one. Um, there's so many people identified as on the right now, or even identifying themselves on the right, who are the same way. I, I increasingly it see it as but, but it's a lie. But it is a lie because the guys who are on the right, who are actually national socialists, are socialists, and socialism is an object of the left. I, uh, I I just genuinely see it as more of the 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 godless globalist ideology is what we're really talking about here. It's godless globalism that that is the real answer that is the real enemy as I see it. Um, and you have godless globalists on the left and on the godless globalist right. And of course, what's and happening to the godless globalist right? People, what's happening? You have huh? rich people and international corporations who yeah. are left to the core, who have who take the advantage of the free market. To gain power and make sweetheart deals with the government, but a a, a business government uh, amalgamation is is fascism is a left wing or a cultural artifact. It's certainly like let's agree that it's Christian versus anti Christian. I don't care what they call themselves. They can call themselves globalists. They can call themselves leftists. The, 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 they they swap and they switch their labels every ten years to avoid being identified. But what's really driving them is they have a vision of God as man. They have a vision of themselves as being godlike, of being able to determine reality, of being able to set the rules of, of good and evil for themselves, which is fundamentally anti-Christian. That's uh, what the, the real, the real point is anti-Christ. Keon in the comments, who's one of our atheist friends, says, if, uh, if, if going to punch Nazis in the face is a moral right thing to do, why not, with the same logic, people should go punch atheists in the face? Keon, you're showing a little growth there. That's right. We give atheists a hard time here, sometimes a very hard time. Uh, but at the same time, like it, you're asking the most important question. If it's if, if it's sauce for the goose, is it sauce for the gander? I mean, I mean, if it's okay, if you if you get to call anybody, and I'm not accusing you, I'm on your side, Keon. But um, I mean, I'm saying if you accuse some, if you say it's okay to hit somebody because you don't like what they have to say, then that's the new rule, isn't it? So maybe you know, John and I should just run around punching atheists. And punching, we're not going to do that. I'm just joking. But yeah. this is where it goes, right? We're going to run around and turn the other cheek. And praying for yeah. yeah, turn the other cheek is easily misinterpreted. And there's Christians will tell you that it, it that, that phrase has more to do with uh, turning and standing against somebody, uh, up to somebody as an equal. But that all said, I mean, there's a reason the apostles carry swords. Um, and Christians have have shown that they are actually really good at war once they decide to do it. They're usually so so I, I regard a Christian knight as just as much of a Christian as a Christian monk, even though one has sworn a, a vow of fealty to a, to a secular king to defend the law, and the other has sworn a, a vow of peace. I have no I have no problem with that. I'm not saying we're pacifists, but I'm saying uh, we don't need to resort to uh, censorship. To silence opposing political views, the only time that that the common law uh, regarded censorship as legitimate was to stop moral decay, things like pornography, false advertising, libel, slander. Okay, those things have never been regarded as being within the ambit of free speech. I'm telling you this as a as a as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. you don't believe me? Look it up. You can look up the law. It's it's written publicly. Those things are not an attempt to. Those things are not an attempt to shut down revolutionaries. They're an attempt to stop people from corrupting our children. <laughs> ah. the, 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 
I, I, the, the bottom, here's the question though, then. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I have really thought about this because, you know, there's, the, we had this whole experiment of so-called secularism, which is that we'd have, we'd have values that were religion neutral. It can't be done. It turns out it literally can't be done. It's not possible. So you have to decide which religions you're going to tolerate and get along with and which ones you're not. That, that, that's pretty much what I, I more or less see. When you're dealing with Christians, here's what your censorship looks like. Take your porn and, um, and, and, and keep it hidden so we don't have to be giving that to kids. And, uh, you know, if you're going to be a prostitute, uh, you're going to do it in legal zones where we let you do that stuff and leave the rest of the nice people alone who don't want to be around that stuff. That's as hard as the Christian censorship gets. I disagree. As a rule, I disagree. In, in, in we're not talking about Nevada. Prostitution used to be illegal everywhere in the United States back in those forty-eight states. That's true. That's true. And Prostitution is not only illegal. harmful to the it's not only harmful to the moral fabric of the nation because it breaks down the family. It's also uh, physically unhealthy because it spreads disease. Oh, oh it's everything not good about for the women. Everything it's about not, prostitution not for the whore. Bad. Everything about yeah. prostitution is bad. But what we also know that even while it was illegal in all those states, the truth is you always found areas where the whorehouses were, that the law basically tolerated them as long as they weren't making a problem for people. You always found that in the CD County somewhere. It existed. And as long as the people doing that stuff knew better than to uh, make a big public stink or a scandal and they just stayed in their, their CD little whorehouses, most of the time they got left alone. It was sad and tragic, but. Yeah, but that was due to a failure of Christianity. That was not due. That was not part. It's not libertarianism is not part of Christian morality. We we don't regard those things as being legitimate, and we don't think you have a right to commit such such uh, aberrant behaviors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was even Saint Augustine who said it was better to tolerate things like that than try to completely outlaw them, as I recall. But I mean, I agree. There's pragmatic considerations of it, but that's not. I don't think. I don't think it's part of the Christian religion to tolerate. Uh, prostitution. Fair enough. We can Fair be enough. very tolerant. Depends on how you look at it, yeah. but yeah. I mean, we're, um, supposed to, we're supposed to be the law, even if the, even if the law is in the hands of Caesar, who is a who is a tyrant. We're not supposed to to rebel, but uh, uh, you know, unless they make us break God's law, right? Break God's law, in which case all bets are off. The myth was that that, that, that Christians, uh, by and large, uh, 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 oppressed gays, and that's actually not true either, um, at, at least not in a realistic sense. Um, it was certainly illegal, frowned upon, looked down upon. Um, but anybody who was around those days knew if you meant if you if you kept to your your own business and didn't bother people, there was plenty of ways you could go about into what Christians would call dens of iniquity to do that stuff. Christians didn't follow gays around. Christians didn't, I mean, and if you look at the reality, um, you look at secular regimes, atheist regimes, despite the myth that you've been told, like you don't want to be gay in China. They, <laughs> they are they, they are as nasty or nastier than the Muslims are. And you're there is atheist as you get. You're gay in post-World War II England, which was as about as liberal as you get because uh, the famous mathematician whose name escapes me, who was gay, was it Turing? Yeah, was, Alan Turing. Yeah. and put on a regime of drugs. The modern science worshippers thought they could cure a moral quandary by means of chemicals. And of course, I regard I regard that punishment as inhuman. Uh, you know, it's it's it's, it's one of the things that the, that the Fifth uh, Amendment uh, outlaws. Keon in the comments says, globalism, as I found out recently, is just a proposition, not a real movement, and that one government will rule, all, will rule all forms of government. Keon, it's absolutely a movement. Um, actually, I would say that globalism is, uh, a globalism is an idea that's been around for centuries, that will have one world government. And we have numerous people and ideologies who wish to enact that. There is more than one, and they don't all agree with each other. But international socialism, i.e. communism, as we used to understand it, was definitely globalist. And so is a lot of what goes under the phony rubric of capitalism and free trade now, which is really just corporate globalism. It's the idea of one world, you know, uh, one religion or no religion at all, uh, 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 you know. In, no. in, general, in general, globalism in modern 
uh, American uh, uh, news debates. They're talking about the tendency of the last 10 or 20 years to cede more and more of American authority to unelected international uh, bureaucracies, allegedly erected to help govern trade and make trade free, you know, in, in reality, being sweetheart deals that 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 uh, align the coffers of uh, international corporations. Yeah, it, well, yeah. It was, it was, it's, it's, like, it's like the Soviets saying that their that their uh, union is the People's Republic, or China calling its totalitarianism the People's Republic. They basically said that they were for free trade and they would enact restrictions on trade. The, the the bottom line is globalism is a mindset that's and, and it gets indoctrinated even in kids. One world, one human race, so we'll have no races, we'll have no ethnicities, we'll all kind of blend into one big, uh, uh, you know, amalgamated, uh, you know, grayish brown race. Um, you know, we won't have countries, we won't have borders because borders are all. Uh, there's no heaven. It's not hard to do. Exactly. Yeah. Listen to that song, Imagine by John Lennon, which sounds really beautiful to a lot of people. But when you really listen to it, it's like, that's a horrible movie. That's a horrible song. Yeah. I, I, a, I, there, there was uh, there was uh, no uh, there was no nations in uh, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Do people still read classic science fiction anymore? I don't think they do. I actually had one young person tell me that when I referenced George Orwell's 1984, that he called that a dated pop culture reference. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> right? I love how the stupid stooges can just um, dated pop culture reference because they're more ignorant. They they regard their own lack of knowledge as a sign of superiority. The same way they regard their own upside down moral values as a sign of as a sign of moral virtue. And the I'm only more horrors and abominations than you are, so I'm a better person. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you much. I don't. I, and when it comes to a subject like censorship, first off, it should be. Um, I mean, I. I know we're rambling here today. I mean, one of the things I discovered in my work on Red Pill Religion over the last three years is that there was an absolute effort to censor Christians off the internet, starting in the mid to late two thousands. And it kicked into overdrive around 2012, 2013 to literally drive Christians off the internet, drive us off of YouTube, drive us off of, down our internet sites. Yeah. Same effort as it was used to uh, expunge a lot of independent bloggers. Uh, Christians were definitely targeted for censorship. We still are quite regularly. Um, and it's like, if you put the Christians in charge, you'll get censorship probably. It's a question of what kind of censorship will you get though? Um, because we generally are incredibly tolerant of freedom of speech. We're generally incredibly tolerant of religious speech. You can go back through, you know, various religious conflicts throughout the centuries, but what are you going to replace it with? Because it appears to me that if you bring in some secular people, i.e. some atheists or people who think like atheists, they'll come up with an ideology of their own. They'll come up with fascism, they'll come up with socialism, they'll come up with feminism, they'll come up with communism, they'll come up with objectivism, they'll come up with something, but it will always still be a value set and a set of ultimately of morals or a complete lack thereof. You can't have anyone in charge without them imposing some morals. That I mean, that's, that's probably the line I he hear the most. You'll get these atheists say, I just don't believe in imposing morals on people. You can't not impose moral morals on people. It can't be done, can it? How can you not? If you're against child sacrifice, you're imposing a moral. If you're against torturing uh, small animals for fun, you're imposing a moral. If, if you're against raping children, you're imposing your morals. If you're against, name it. If you're against anything, you're imposing your morals. It is nonsensical to speak of laws that can be objective without having a moral component because a law against murder says that there's a moral quality to the act of taking human life otherwise it's not a law I, I, <laughs> now, I, I, there are regulations I, like drive on the left side of the road in some countries and drive on the right side of the road in other countries that have no moral component those are what we lawyers call uh, uh, malum if prohibitive they're, they're only bad because they're prohibited. They're not bad in themselves. But the criminal law is malum in se, or things that are bad because they're bad. And, and the law is either 
doing its job by recognizing that or not doing its job by recognizing that. And there's a political question as to how much of certain, how much leeway and how much you can tolerate. In the 60s and 70s, we decided as a nation that we could tolerate a lot more pornography in our society. Mm. And as it turns out, that was damaging to our society. That was a bad decision. So we should we should go back to the older law, to the common law. I actually, yeah. I, I actually feel bad. I really used to think porn was mostly harmless. I, I and I don't know what I was thinking. Um, it's not good for those who make it. It's not good for those who distribute it. It's not good for those who yeah, buy it. Uh, it's, it's not good for uh, any person in the whole chain, huh? I thought it was completely harmless. I used to have Playboy magazines that I would whip out and show to friends of mine. Uh, may, <laughs> male and female, uh, as if it was merely as if it was merely a pretty picture of a pretty girl. Yeah. Well, Playboy was, was in the day was well, easier to get 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 away with that because it was just naked girls most of the time. Um, these days, uh, everybody'd laugh at that. But yeah, it, by by modern standards, it it was completely harmless. But I was simply wrong about that. It's it, I mean, it's like uh, I thought twice to a spot. You know, it's not. It's not a. It's not a question. I think is. Uh, is. Uh, it's not one of those questions where there's no evidence on one side of the argument. It, it, you can still debate it, and there's a judgment call involved. But it's not a very uh, confusing question, really. Yeah, agreed. And and I mean, and, and uh, instinctively it, think about. It, Think about showing your two-year-old niece or nephew or some of the child that you love and, and adore that you don't want to see harmed. Think about exposing them to, you know, I, These, even something is not quite, you, you, you immediately recoil. You may go, wait a minute, that's that's not quite right. Here's unless, what you're, mm -hmm. you are, unless you are committed anti-Christian, unless you're a committed leftist, in which case you go, I think exposing children to to homosexuality, to normalizing, to normalizing pornography, to normalizing... Uh, sexual aberrations to normalizing uh, gender dysphoria. I believe those are good for children, and they should be raised to have no inhibitions. But that's a, that's a that's a uh, that's a religious belief. That's a, that's a belief of the atheist religion. Now I should say not all atheists are members of the same sect of atheism. No, no. Sort of modern mindset. Let's call but, it postmodernism, or let's call it. Uh, more lockery because these people are post-human. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they either join a chat set, yeah. They either join a sect or, or or they just say an independent anarchist who thinks they're they're above it all. Um, I mean yet, one, oddly, yet oddly there are certain patterns and of, of their beliefs that crop up again and again and again. Yep. They're basically Gnostics. They're basically first century Christian heretics who thought that God was evil and the devil was good and that they were actually secretly gods who had to merely wake up using their mysterious esoteric knowledge and uh, award to themselves the ability to determine right from wrong. Here's the thing that really gets me, though, John. You and I are from another time. Uh, it, it, I mean, it, the more I interact with young people, I mean, I don't know. I always kind of enjoyed young people, and I always enjoyed pop culture and stuff like that. Um, but, like, they... Uh, Really, they've all been watching pornography since before puberty, and I don't think we've ever had a society like that before. No, and it definitely changes them. Um, of course, they'll sit there and say it didn't hurt me; it didn't do anything weird to me. I'm fine, and it's like, no, dude, no, you you can't even see the damage. And we're not <laughs> trying to make you feel bad or paranoid either. But I'm like, you've got this warped idea of sex and how it works that just isn't true. And and look at how. Uh, unhappy their marriage lives are look at look at the divorce rate look at the suicide rate look at the when, when before in any society in any history did you have uh, men's rights movements of men simply renouncing all females yep yep I mean they, you, were not, saying, uh, you yeah. have a really sick society for men to turn their back on sex yes and yet men are doing it in droves and and, and wanting right. nothing to do with women because the women have also been driven crazy by this idea that the only way to be equal to a man is to be a man. And and, and that, that somehow, that it actually, even among men, this is an argument I've had with people too, a lot of men will just accept this notion that the average male 
wants to copulate with as many females as possible, but the females are, are choosy. It's really not that true. The math doesn't even work out on that. Women are bad. Women sin and women cheat. Women have been, yeah. uh, through all history, they've cheated. There was a study done once uh, in the 1950s suggesting that a really high percentage of men were listed, uh, were, uh, who were not the father of the child listed on the birth certificate. Yeah. But, you in know, fact, all in, that in said, the, English common law, the, the problem is so bad that in the English common law, in order to prevent uh, divorces, basically, in order to prevent domestic uh, uh, disputes from becoming public, because they were trying to protect the marriage institution, a court of law said that a, a man can't question the paternity of his, of his wife's child in, in a court of law. Right. Um, now, I, I think that was partly because of the of the uh, the looseness of the women, especially among the English uh, ruling classes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's partly but it was partly an administrative decision to try to make sure that marriage would not marriages would not be broken up every time there was a dispute over the family will. Because, of course, one way to knock out an heiress and say, oh, that guy's actually a bastard. He's not, he's not actually my son or he's, or, right. or he's not the son of the dead man. So it's just, I mean, just a legal standpoint, you know. But nowadays, people don't even bother getting married. You know, the, the statistics for how many uh, black babies are killed in the womb, the statistics oh my God, for how, many, how many Dear God, uh, it's families horrifying. have never had a divorce, I mean, have never had a marriage ceremony, it's outrageous. And, and it's deliberate, by the way. It's the, 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 the Soviets back in the day funded an effort to try to destroy the moral, the moral compass of America. Because they realized that if they if they could break down our religion and our family structure, that we would become easily manipulated, uh, you know, mob zombies. And look around you. Lo and behold, the younger generation doesn't even know who Pol Pot is. <laughs> they don't remember the fall of the Berlin Wall. So no. then the word social means I get free stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. and they really think that people didn't understand how sex worked. 50 or 100 years ago and that we were all just scared that our big god was going to uh you know kill a kitten because we masturbated or something and no um there's a reason that we've always said the people have always that most societies even non-christian ones have frowned on uh loose sexual behavior it spreads disease it spreads unwanted children kids come and i'm telling you guys if you grew up without a dad and a mom you got robbed and it screwed you up yeah insecure and made you not know how to navigate the world as well. Yep. It's it, and and and, and, and you're raised without a dad. You don't know what a man should act like. And if, if you're if you're a woman raised without a dad, you don't know what to look for in a man. If you and vice versa, if you're if you're a kid raised by a dad and not by a woman, you don't know what to look for in a woman. You don't know what they act like. You don't know what they like. You don't know how to deal with them. And I don't I don't know how we get out of this mess except telling people look look especially young people the, the value set you you've been raised with a phony history um i mean i grow i grow a little more reactionary all the time i'd be so happy to go back to the 80s level of uh of dysfunction of social dysfunction that we had because people at least still ca carried on as if they had some morals um they, they they still carried on as if you know we really shouldn't be giving the hardcore porn uh, to the kids um, they really were like, yeah, you can be gay, but don't be in your face and don't be trying to recruit and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, recruit kids and, and, and seduce them. And guess what? All of that is happening now. There was a guy who solicited an article for me because I'm well known in the science fiction community. And he said, give me your, I, I'm, I'm asking many authors, give me your top three most uh, science fiction books that you would recommend from the past. Now, it was no long article. It was only a few paragraphs, but I did take some hours out of my my day to think about it. And I was doing it uh, just out of courtesy to him. I didn't ask him any, you know, my, I wasn't being paid per word. So I submitted it to him. He posted it on his website, and within the hour, he writes me back and says, I have to take the article down because you are uh, too controversial because you've said a quote that is so horrible that I can't, I can't allow myself to be associated with you. I hope you understand my decision. Now he didn't say which quote he was, he was quoting, but I, I, I but I have my suspicions because there's only one that, uh, that the uh, uh, people who don't like the uh, people who were my financial uh, competitors and political opponents during the Hugo kerfluffle of a few years back, 
combed through my blog to try to find something that they could rewrite to sound controversial. And they didn't really find anything except for when I penned an article objecting to someone using a story franchise that I and my children rather liked to preach uh, sexual abnormalities to children. Now, in my naivete, I thought it was not controversial to say, you, in our libertarian utopia of the future, should be allowed to follow your sexual daydreams however you wish, provided you don't impose on others, but please don't. Please don't preach to children things that are not that that are not going to lead to uh, you know normal sexual relations between men and females and females. But no, no, that apparently is hate speech these days. Saying a man is not a woman is also hate speech, as we just found out from Michael Knowles' experience. Now, so there... that was so controversial that I can't even be asked to to venture an opinion about some completely unrelated topic because you had the wrong opinion on something else. Yep. And that's, I, that's I, I, where I, we're going. I am a nephew. I commit a heresy. Look, I'm a religious guy. I recognize religious thinking when I see it. <laughs> yes. And, and, and they think they'll be punished by the great goddess of history if they do not, at all times, in their thoughts, words, and deeds, no matter who's looking and who's not looking, praise and worship the, the Antichrist. The, the, anything that's against the West, anything that's against the family, Anything that's against men being men, women being women, anything that's against normal notions of justice, anything that's against normal notions of, of freedom and uh, equality, they're in favor of. And, and anything that's for those things, they they say is thought crime. What, what, we are seeing, what we are seeing now is a level of censorship that would have been, been unthinkable in even the 70s, let alone the 80s or 90s, uh, or even the early 2000s. Um, even mind, let me say... When I was younger, left wingers used to say routinely, "I disagree with your right to say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it." And they would say, "You have to extend to me the same courtesy, because my First Amendment rights should allow Hustler magazine to be bought and sold freely, and it and should it, allow me to blaspheme people in public, to blaspheme God in public. It should allow me to use four-letter words in public." Okay, and that was their argument. And, and now, it was a trick. It was a trick. And it was a trick. It was a lie. And now that blasphemy is is normal, let me tell you a story, a real quick story about censorship and blasphemy. All right, but we're I running think, along, I so we got to. We're, we're running along, so wrap it okay, up. Real quick. There was a show on TV not long ago. I, I can't remember the name. I think it was called Deadwood, about the Old West. And the main thing that was of interest to the that that, that set all the intelligentsia of Twitter about the show is that the the uh, sailors, the uh, excuse me, the cowboys. Swore like sailors. They they, they used hideous four letter words. All in the time. Okay. And someone did a, a bit of a study. Someone was curious and went back and said and thought and looked up to see what cowboys had really been swearing like. One of the writers. And when he tried to put in real swear words from real cowboys, they were all things like uh, God and Jesus and Jesus and God and, and so on and so forth. And people didn't want to watch the people the, the test audience wouldn't accept the show because they thought it was too religious. That's hilarious, so considering how religious no, people were. The, time, the culture at the time was so shocked by the language of cowboys, which we don't even censor on our, uh, uh, you know, primetime TV broadcasts, that that in order to get the same level of how disgusting it was to the people at the time, they had to throw in all sorts of the the all sorts of uh, uh, four letter words that are not allowed on the radio. It's, 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 and, and the left, after they successfully make it so that everyone is now crude, and by the way, that's that's for a reason. The reason why you want everyone to swear and everyone to blaspheme and everyone to be crude is because crude men don't have any sublime, beautiful things that that's so attractive to them that they're willing to resist the state, that they're willing to suffer for, they're willing to die for. Yep. So once everything is F-bomb and F-bomb and F-U and F your M-F and F your F-F, once you live in that mindset, everything is covered with graffiti. Everything is ugly. The, the cathedrals burn. There's nothing worth standing up for. It's, it's very subtle and very very simple uh, trick. So in any case, once they got all their F-bombs and got all their porn, then they go, oh, by the way, you can't say anything against our political candidate. You can't say lower taxes because that's racist. You can't say build a wall because that's racist. You can't say uh, a nation should be ruled by laws instead of by men because that's racist. You can't say there should be a constitution and, and written laws to, to follow because it's racist. You can't say that votes should not be surrounded by fraud 
or tempt people to fraud because that's racist. You can't say that a person should have local control of the school board because that's racist. You can't say, do, do I need to go on? Yeah. Those are the things. Those are the things that are now outside the ambit of polite conversation. Those topics. But if you want to talk in public about your abortion or your sexual deviancy, then you are a hero. And if you want to go punch a perfectly innocent person who is not a Nazi, but you are, then you're a hero. The guy, I tell you, the guy wearing the mask, the guy wearing the bandana, <laughs> the Antifa guy, the so-called anti-fascist guy, he's the fascist. I if was, I, I, I'm telling you, it just amazes me. Uh, I'll just, we should just close on this. It was Christians who created the concept of free speech. Yep. It really did. I mean, it was Protestants, to be honest, but still. Look, look, and, look at Thomas Aquinas. Look at, look at the Thomas. He's not. Oh, well, that's Protestant. true, too. You go all the way back to Thomas Aquinas, well before the Protestants. I mean, these were guys, Thomas Aquinas used to, they used to have public debates as to whether or not there was a God and other other controversial, contentious topics. Yep. Um, it, it's, it's, it, and, and it was the Christians who preserved the writings of ancient pagans, including the pagans they didn't agree with. Um, because it was right and proper to do so. At some point, you've got to ask where the idea of free speech comes from and who gave it to you. Um, or, I mean, really, it's all but over, man, for this society, unless we come back to some sort of values that are transcendent, that is above human reason, where we say, look, we have these rights because they're God-given and you don't get to abrogate them no matter what. Otherwise, you get whatever the people in charge right now with the most power get to enforce or whatever otherwise, the mob gets to enforce. Otherwise you get Venezuela. You get yeah. animals in the zoo starving and people sneaking into the zoo to kill them because they're starving. Yeah. And yeah. toilet paper. All and right. That's what you get. Well, it's hell. If you reject heaven, you get hell. It's really simple. Reject heaven, you get hell. I see that too. Man, it's so funny too. If people are listening to John and I, we're not telling you you have to come Bible thumping, uh, Jesus uh, screaming uh, fundamentalists at all. We'd love you to become Catholic with us, but even if you're not going to do that, I mean, my God, just start looking at what is the basis of our rights and why have we lost them so quickly? Guess what? It wasn't the evil Christians who took them from you. It was the Christians who brought them to you. And now you're losing them. Might want to start making some Christian friends anyway. All right, everybody. Uh, this has been fun. Be sure to visit scifiright.com and buy his books. Visit eljajilamplighter.com and buy her stuff. Uh, visit redpillreligion.com and buy our stuff or drop a note in the tip jar or find us on Subscribestar, Patreon, and, or any of our other funding vehicles. And uh, come check us out for E. Michael Jones tomorrow night. God bless everybody. Right.